the Prince of Wales has recreated the look and feel of his home for the centerpiece exhibition of the summer opening of Buckingham Palace. Among the diverse items on display is a poignant photo of Charles holding his first grandchild, Prince George, with the Duke of Cambridge beside him. It is positioned on a side table, next to a china duck and bronze dog. Among the highlights is a never-before-seen photo of Charles with his eldest son Prince William and then newborn grandson Prince George. The young prince, who celebrates his fifth birthday on Sunday, can be seen sleeping peacefully in his grandfather's arms while his dad smiles for the camera in a sweet photo of the three heirs to the throne all together. It is not the only portrait of Prince George to go on display. Another framed photo shows the third in line to the throne's christening from 2013. George is held by his mum, the Duchess of Cambridge, who is joined by Prince William, the Queen, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, the Duchess of Cornwall and Prince Harry. The official portrait was taken in St. James Palace, where the family recently returned for the christening of William and Kate's third child Prince Louis. Charles selected more than 100 pieces from private family paintings and photographs, major art from the royal collection and work by up-and-coming artists for the attraction, entitled Prince and Patron, which marks his 70th birthday year. Other personal touches included a picture of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's recent wedding, and baby George's official christening image. And one of the highlights is Napoleon Bonaparte's red felt hooded cloak, a stunning artifact the heir to the throne knows well from Windsor Castle, where it was on display for a number of years. In audio commentary for exhibition visitors, Charles says about the cloak, Since, as a child, I first caught sight of this cloak in the Grand Vestibule at Windsor, I have been fascinated by the sheer magic of the color, the dashing pattern of the lining and the enthralling story of Napoleon himself which it conjures up. It is said to have been worn by the Emperor during his Egyptian campaign and was taken from his carriage after the Battle of Waterloo 15 years later. The artwork is arranged on the walls of an octagonal room with tables filled with books by Charles, family snaps, vases and other decorative objects, while above are hung rows of paintings and other artworks, some with a tapestry as a backdrop. Vanessa Remington, senior curator of paintings at the Royal Collection Trust, said, it's a departure because it is not a standard museum display and the works aren't shown in isolation, they're shown in profusion very, very densely. Tables are dressed with a range of objects and those are intended to show or give a flavor of the interiors of the Prince of Wales's own residences because this is a very personal show. The exhibition creates the impression of different areas of a drawing room from the Prince's official London home Clarence House or his country retreat Higgler than Gloucestershire. Ms. Remington, curator of the exhibition, said the pieces do not have explanatory text next to them as they wanted to create a visual display rather than a museum display. In one section, painted oil sketches of William and Harry by Nicola Phillips are hung next to watercolors painted by Charles in the 1990s on the Queen's private Balmoral estate. The lower marble busts of the prince's great-great-great-grandparents Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, who themselves were well-known art lovers. In the audio commentary, Charles says, I am very fond of the two preparatory oil sketches of my sons which I acquired from the artist, Nicky Phillips, in 2009. They were painted for a double portrait that now hangs in the National Portrait Gallery. Both are dressed in the regimental uniform of the household cavalry, the Blues and Royals, and are particularly good likenesses. The attraction also features work from students and artists from Charles's three arts organizations, the Royal Drawing School, the Prince's Foundation School of Traditional Arts, and Turquoise Mountain, based in Kabul, Afghanistan. Some of the contributions feature Islamic-inspired artwork and other traditions from the Middle East, including a moving triple portrait of three Yazidi women painted in Iraq by Hannah Rose Thomas, after they had escaped ISIS captivity. Speaking about a pavilion, filled with textiles from Wales, built in the middle of the exhibition space, Charles says in the audio commentary, the striking cedarwood pavilion stands at over four and a half meters high and features intricate carvings which draw on the rich heritage of Afghan design. The prince, who visited the exhibition with his wife on Wednesday, adds, it is a joint effort between the artist Nazir Yasna and the Turquoise Mountain woodworking team and demonstrates how the charity is reviving traditional skills in historic communities, something in which, 
as patron, I am enormously proud to play a part. Please subscribe channel. Thank you for watching.